Hi, my name is Brittany and this is my channel, Pineapple Grease. Like and subscribe and all of that. Um, and today we're going to be talking about Butai Ni Sake. I think that's how you say it. I'm not really sure, but that's my best effort. It's by Harusono Sho. It's the same author as Sasake to Miyano, which is doing so well these days. Like it's gonna get an anime adaptation at some point. I don't know when that comes out. And also it got picked up in English. So the first volume of the manga comes out in like two days. So that's really exciting too. Um, I didn't like that story as much as this one, but it was still enjoyable. But let's focus on <laughs> this one. So this is Butai Ni Sake and I thought it was so good. I read it like just yesterday or the day before that and it's ongoing but what they have right now is like pretty short. They only have seven and a half chapters. I have no idea how long it's gonna be but like I'm really excited for it because just the beginning part was so good. Like it was so good. This series though I was very confused by to some extent because I found it I think I was looking up like Jose series and trying to find something new in that because if you don't know what Jose is it's like sort of the next level up after shoujo like shoujo is like young girls and then Jose is like more mature girls you know so I was looking up those manga to try and find something new to read and <laughs> I found this one, but I think it's probably mislabeled. I don't think it's Jose. I think it's actually Shonen I. Like, I'm highly suspicious, but I don't know. Like, they nothing happens in the first seven chapters, so, like, there's nothing outright showing that it would be, but, like, it, there's pretty heavy, like, that looks like Shonen I to me, like, if you don't know what Shonen Eye is, it's basically like the same as shoujo, but it's like two boys. But it's not like yaoi where it's like explicit sex and gross. <laughs> I mean, no offense if you like yaoi. I just like don't really like lots of explicit sex. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, so that's why a Shonen Eye is much better for me at least because it's you know it's got that light fluffy shoujo feel to it where you know it's not gonna be all graphic and scarring <laughs> so I think this is shown in eye because there's definitely lots of scenes where you're like hmm that seems pretty gay <laughs> like they seem pretty those two characters seem like something is going on with them in their relationship I haven't even told you the synopsis, sorry, but the very basic synopsis is it's about like a theater club. So our main character is, his name is Asahi and he comes in as a freshman and he sees this like theater club put on their, their little play to try and like get you to join their club. And he decides to join the club because he wants to sort of grow as a person and he wants to be able to like talk to people better is what he tells everyone. So he joins the theater club to help him overcome all his problems because he has like pretty bad anxiety I would say and just kind of I don't know but it's really sweet because he has like a lot of problems with like he's sort of acting all the time because he's so anxious about everything like he's always overthinking like oh how should I act in this situation oh no like I don't want to seem weird like I feel like through the story like I don't know yet but it has this feeling to me like oh it starts out kind of a little bit sad because he kind of has a lot of like hard stuff going on but then they're always so supportive of him everyone in the theater club so it's really sweet and while he's going through hard times they like come in or like help him out and stuff so it's really nice and it sort of gets the feeling where he's gonna through like learning acting in this club I feel like he's gonna learn how to be himself and not always be acting in real life like it gives off that vibe that like that's where it's heading into that little cute like grow as a person and like through theater you can learn to be yourself and you know if you like theater I think you'll especially enjoy this 
series like if you have any sort of theater background like I have done tons of theater I'm a big <laughs> fan of doing plays and stuff I've done like I think like nine shows or something that I've been in so yeah <laughs> I'm a big theater nerd so that definitely helps I think you can still enjoy the story a lot if you don't have any sort of theater background I think it's still fun and especially if you have any sort of like anxiety or like I think most people do where you just like get uncomfortable in certain situations and things like that like this is very relatable I would say I mean it is manga so it's like a little over the top and people's motivations are a little strange but it's definitely a really good story so I recommend you go and check it out there's only seven and a half chapters right now it's not currently licensed but there's hope because since there since a uh, Haru Sono show the mangaka's other series is licensed in English now that makes me think that like oh maybe one day this will get licensed too and that would be so swell I would be so happy I'll add it to my bookshelf and collect it one day if it comes out but for now, we'll just have to read it online and hope for the best. But yes, yeah, so that's the end of the non-spoiler section. I hope you go and read it and then come back and talk to me about it because I am so excited about this story and I can't wait to talk to you. All right, bye those people. Everyone else stay here. Okay, <laughs> so now let's get into it <laughs> oh this story i just loved it so much like it was so sad at some points but mostly it's so light and happy you know what i mean like also he he definitely has so like some major anxiety issues for sure like that thing where he's on the train and then he gives up his seat to the old lady but in order to like get her to take his seat he says oh no I'm getting off at this next stop so it doesn't it doesn't matter even though he doesn't plan to get off at the next stop and then because he like feels awkward about staying and like being caught in the lie he just gets off at the wrong stop and then has to go so he goes to school like earlier every day because of situations like this and I don't know it just felt very relatable because I could definitely see myself being like oh like I'm gonna just go this way and then you go like the long way around to avoid looking awkward basically like I think a lot of people have done that where you're like oh I don't want to look stupid and like turn and go back the same way so I'm just gonna go around this way <laughs> and stuff like that like he does little things like that all the time where I'm like yup <laughs> see myself doing that I don't know but his motivation behind why he's supposedly so anxious being that like his friends once told him he was scary for no apparent reason <laughs> and so now he has like this huge like complex about not trying to be scary is kind of weird but it's interesting like it's interesting how that's where it comes out where he's just like acting all the time because he's like be light and bubbly don't be scary like he spends his whole life being so anxious about like trying to not be scary and it's such a shame because he's not scary I don't understand and then all of his theater friends or whatever are all like you're not scary like what's your problem I don't understand but also it's like it's so sad how he had this whole problem where he was like I just don't trust my friends anymore like I don't like have they always thought I was scary and I don't know like how to behave around them anymore after that and it's so sad and then it makes it so like he feels anxious just like going to school and things and he like stops going to school in middle school and oh it's like so devastating like that whole arc of him being like so sad like from the past and then it starts showing up again because he gets really anxious with the play and so he's just like he has that crippling anxiety where he like sits on the step putting his shoes on and is like I can't tie my shoes like I can't go to school but also he's like I can't not go to school like I can't drop out of school again like I have to go to school I like 
you can't just not go to school. And, ugh, it's terrible. It's so sad. But I really liked that. And then the theater group all come and help him magically because they just, like, noticed that he had, was struggling. And the theater group, I loved the theater aspects of it because, like I said, I am a huge thespian or whatever. <laughs> but no, it was so good. Except for, I don't know what kind of theater troupe this is. Maybe it's different in Japan, but they have three male members and one girl. And the girl is just like the director and producer. She's not even one of the actors. And I don't think that would ever happen, <laughs> in, at least not in my world. Because every time I've done anything theater related, there's like 500 girls and two boys or like one boy. You know, it's usually all girls who are going to be in theater and you, it's so hard to get boys to be in stuff. I mean, it's wonderful that this is like that, but it's just weird because <laughs> it seems like they would have more girls. But I guess also they're they're so small that maybe it doesn't make that big a difference because they're only like four people. So I don't know. Yeah, well, and the play that they put on, like the one that he sees at the very beginning and then they re-put it on later, like it's so dark for a high school play. I don't know. Like, I don't think we would ever be allowed to have done that in high school where the chairman is like seducing the kid's sister and then he's like i don't know like drawing pictures of dead bodies and his sister gets burned alive and then he hangs himself like it's a very dark story i mean in the acting and like the drawings of i well i guess the acting like as in like the way that it's drawn and his expressions and stuff um what's his face amari senpai they're so cool like he looks so cool when they draw him out and he's acting like it looks awesome so it looked amazing but it just seems like i don't know how they got permission to do that play because it doesn't seem very appropriate i don't know i wish we could do stuff like that more i mean it was really cool but also i did go to like a little tiny like very strict school so i don't know maybe they would let you do that somewhere else who knows? But anyway, it was really interesting. And then also just the fact that he's like, you know, Asahi is like, you scared me so much, Imari Senpai, and that's why I'm gonna be in this because you scared me and that made me want to come so that I thought since you can act scary, I can learn to not be scary, which seemed very strange. Like his whole motivation of like, I don't want to be scary seems very, very strange to me. Like, I feel like, I don't know, it's weird. I think it more so his problem is just like having some sort of complex about himself. Like, and he's always worried about disappointing people and like how he's coming off to other people and like he doesn't want to be a burden to anyone. And he, he definitely has a lot of issues, but his issues are all around like, I just want to be the best person I can be. Like, they're very like, I have deep problems because I'm so good, <laughs> you know? Like, it's that typical, like, my problems are that I'm just too amazing. But it is fairly relatable. Like, I think a lot of people struggle with like, oh no, I don't want to come across as something weird. And in his case, the something weird is, I don't want to be scary even though he's not scary at all. Maybe he's scary when like they do their play. I just like all the little like theater games and techniques and stuff that they do is so true to like, I don't know like if you have any theater experience, but they're definitely things that you actually do in theater. Like when you study theater things like, oh, how, sh how would your character walk? Like, would they take big steps or would they take little steps? Do they take up a lot of space? Those are the types of things that, yeah, you definitely talk about that in theater. And it seems really silly when you're doing it. Like, you're like, I don't know. My character is a person. Like, I don't know how they walk. Sometimes it's very annoying. And then other times you're like, well, they're an old person. So obviously they walk 
like an old person like they're not gonna be like taking huge steps and stuff but it's just so funny because you definitely do talk about those types of things and also like when he's having asahi he when he's having trouble like being angry and then he just starts trying to be angry by like yelling and they're like no that's not what your character would do like what do you like how do you think he would respond like why do you think he did with those like leading questions that directors and stuff totally give you to try and get you to be like understand why your character should do a certain thing I definitely like that's something that my director in college would definitely do <laughs> like that is how she would ask questions of like trying to get you to come up with stuff yourself and his like oh yeah because I'm you know a more mature person I'm not just gonna like freak out and throw things and scream and stuff I'm gonna be more composed in my anger you know that's like that's definitely the type of thing you think about and I love how they have all these little details and they even have that thing where she throws the imaginary ball and like what kind of ball is it and you have to track it through the sky like we did the stupid little activities like that like they're fun they're just weird but yeah, it helps and it's interesting. Like we would do this in college a lot where it would be like, oh, you're gonna be with a group and then when you pass the ball and you're passing like, one person's gonna like pass like a bowling ball and it's gonna be like really heavy and you have to do that. And then the next person is like passing like, oh, here, this is a tennis ball. So it's like pretty light and easy to throw and catch. And then the next person is maybe passing like, oh, this is like, you know one of those beach balls and so it's like super light and they're just kind of like hitting it up to you and you're like oh yeah <laughs> i just i loved the little theater elements in it i've probably gone on about it way too long but like they're so good and then also like asahi how he learns all his lines and he knows them all really well and then he it comes to like doing the blocking and actually putting movement to it and then he's like i I can't remember my lines and move at the same time. I don't know how to do it. And like that happens. Like I feel like you sort of have to learn your lines twice because when you learn them without movement, I think it's so hard to learn your lines without any context, which is sort of what Imari Senpai says when he's like, it's hard to do it without movement. And he like does the, the super gay <laughs> the, the, the super gay thing that makes you think hmm, I'm pretty sure this is shonen I and not Jose but because <laughs> he like he puts his hand on the other guy or whatever when they're like lying in the grass because he can't stand just like not doing anything because it's so unnatural so to some extent I always felt like I had to learn my lines sort of twice or like I hardly could learn them until I got the blocking and then I was like now I have context for the lines and so I can actually remember them with the movement because learning something with movement is so much easier because then you have like I don't you're engaging more senses so it's easier to remember and Imari Senpai is very strange like he's a very strange character and that he has that whole thing about how he's like don't look at me nobody can look at me like he, he doesn't like people looking at him in the face or whatever and so then also he's always like oh sorry i won't look at you when i talk to you <laughs> and it's just very strange but then he's so big on the stage which i think also is pretty accurate for a lot of theater people and like actors and stuff like so many actors are like doop de doop I'm gonna go be in the corner in person but then when they go on the stage they're like ha 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 I am the king and then they get off the stage and they're like doop 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 don't pay attention to me <laughs> so like it makes sense that you would get someone like that but the fact that he's so extreme where he's like don't look at me in my face. I don't know how you would like go through life without having people, you know, like, like with trying to stop everyone from looking at you. But then also it's interesting because with Asahi, it's like sometimes it seems like he, he's not trying to get Asahi to like look away from him and then Asahi does and he's like, oh, he like looked like that was so considerate of him. But it also feels a little bit like maybe he doesn't need Asahi to look away from him as much 
because I mean it's gonna be really awkward if it turns out that it's not shonen eye and I'll just be like oh it's it, it seemed pretty pretty gay to me I thought <laughs> because I definitely think that Asahi and Imari Senpai are gonna form a relationship and they're gonna like grow together because the one guy he'll like sort of be like oh I want you to look at me actually because I love you my junior or whatever kohai however you say that and then the other one's gonna be like oh I look up you so much in Mari senpai <laughs> and they'll just like both grow as people <laughs> Uh, no, can you imagine, though, like, if it's not, you know, like, if, if there is no romance in it, I'm gonna be like, oh, well, it seems like there should be, like, it really seems like it's there, and it's a Harusono show, their other series is Shonen Eye, so I'm, like, pretty sure that this one is too, but I don't know, maybe not, we'll see, we'll see. Does anyone know? Like, is it is it really? Because I'm pretty sure it is. But, like, all of the tags say that it's Jose. So maybe it is just Jose. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I'm curious. Oh, and Asahi with his friends. It's so sad. Like, when he sees his friend again and he has that reaction of, like, I don't want to talk to you. Like, why did you notice me? Like, it's so sad. And then it just, like, brings back all his hard feelings about it from before. Because he, like, ran away from it. And he's like, I don't... Uh, and then he realizes he was just running away from his past. And he's like, I don't... I don't know what to do about this. Like, I thought I was moving forward. But really, I'm just running away. And then... But then he, like, gets over it. To some extent and he like starts talking to his friends again and he realizes like oh they wanted to go to the same school as me like they were trying to still be friends with me even though I basically just cut them off because I was like oh you said I was scary we're not friends anymore basically so like his friends are so much better than he like thought they were and it's so nice that like they come and see his play and are so supportive and stuff even though they've been so like disconnected from how they were in middle school or whatever so it's just really nice that he has that where he's sort of like I don't know like he already has some growth and he like fixes his relationship some like he's still not totally there oh and he has that moment where he hears his friends they're both on the same train as him and they're talking and are like, yeah, I really did see him on the train. And he's just sitting there being like, oh my gosh, don't notice me. Like, don't, don't see me, please. Please don't, no. It's just very interesting. Like, I think he's a fairly relatable character in a lot of ways. Like, I think a lot of people have had that experience where you're like, don't look at me. I'm not, I'm not here. Oh, and like with when Imari Senpai goes to get a drink, before the rehearsal and then he like runs into that one girl who like drops all the thumbtacks and they're like picking up the thumbtacks together and so then what's his face Asahi he comes in from behind and is like gonna go get a drink too and then is like oh should I wait I don't like I don't want to interrupt them while they're talking which I also think is a super normal reaction to be like mm, I don't Mm, like it's like oh I don't want it I don't want it to be awkward like mm, I don't know I don't know I'm just gonna awkwardly stand here in the shadows until it seems like it won't be weird for me to show up <laughs> but then he like comes out to the rescue to save Amari Senpai because he knows like she's making him really uncomfortable and so it's so nice. Like, he, he overcomes his, like, I don't want to be awkward to be like, oh, no, I'm Mario Senpai. Like, we gotta go and, like, rescue him from that girl and make it not. Uh, like, he, like, he's so good at helping things not be awkward for other people. Like, it's like he knows so well the types of situations that he's trying to avoid because he's so conscious of, like, not having these weird things and, like, avoiding 
being uncomfortable and stuff like he he's definitely he has such like anxiety and he's like trying to help make things go as smoothly as possible and so then whenever things get all hard for other people he's always the first person there to be like oh here take my jacket now people won't have to look at you in the face and like oh uh, let me swoop in and save you so it's like i don't know he's just so helpful to other people because he really like knows how it is and it's like oh i would hate this situation i will save you from it or like i know you will hate this so here we go i will step in you know and it's like all his anxiety seems to just go away like he doesn't care when it comes to like oh i'm gonna help you like of course and so it's so sweet like he has such a sweet personality in that way like all his flaws are like yeah he's definitely very flawed but they come out in a like he's such a nice person <laughs> type of way like he's he has a problem with being so overly self-deprecating and like, oh my gosh, I'm ruining it for everyone and like, oh, I don't deserve this or like that, whatever. And the props and costume person, uh, what's his name? Kinagawa Senpai or something? He's like, no being self-deprecating. Like if I give you something and then you say, oh, I don't deserve that, that makes me feel bad, okay? So no, you don't get to be like that and sort of puts Asuhi in his place and it's so nice. Where Asuhi's like, oh, okay, I like I never thought of it that way. Yeah, and he's a, an interesting character. Like we don't really see a lot of Kinagawa Senpai. He's kind of just like, oh, I love costumes, ah, but then he's like weirdly shy at the same time, even though he's like shy while being very like, ha ah, <laughs> and not shy. So he's interesting in that way, but like we definitely in these first seven chapters don't get to see a lot of him, but it's just nice because the whole theater club is like so devoted to their club. Like they're so on top of it and like work so hard. Like you have Botan Senpai, who's like the one girl in the group and she's the director and producer and stuff. And you know, she like makes that whole script and brings it to his house and stuff. And also she seems like she's almost definitely a, like a very rich girl based on the fact that she has her own personal drivers and stuff. So I will probably get to see more of that. Like I'm curious if she has some sort of interesting backstories with being like the rich girl who has a personal driver. That's sort of all we really know about her and that she's really big into theater and she wears like her theater t-shirts and stuff and is a really good director apparently and she's also so supportive but also is so like oh yeah let's just get rid of that temporary thing you said you didn't want escape routes and he's like no but like i want it, like insurance i don't know if i'm gonna like your club <laughs> i want to be able to leave if i don't like it i don't want to just sign up then she's so funny in that way well and then it's weird how they're like lent out to the art department because the art people like help them build their sets and backgrounds and stuff which makes sense that they would sort of do that for them and so they have some sort of connection but that the fact that they like lend out Imari Senpai to go be their model in order to do it and then they have Asahi and Imari Senpai going and the art club president is like they give us sources of moe I mean inspiration <laughs> is so funny like it's so bad like Especially with Amari Senpai, who he, like, can't stand to have people look at him. I imagine that would be a very painful situation where he has to go get drawn by all the art kids. Seems not so great to me. And then him and Asahi, how they have them, like, doing weird poses while they recite their lines. And it's just very strange. And then the art club people are like, oh, we wish we could give you more lines to say. And they're like, well that would ruin the point of us running our lines like if you just give us random new lines because you want to like satisfy your weird fantasies I don't know <laughs> yeah that was basically the story like it's so good it has so much cool stuff in it and like part of why I like this story particularly is I find the you know focus around acting being very interesting and you know it's not just a love story like there isn't really a love story yet but it seems like there will be probably we'll see <laughs> still 
but you know I like that there's like a focus on something it's not just like ah love because sometimes that can be kind of boring like I kind of like it when there's multiple things going on and it's not just like all about the romance or whatever like it's nice when there's like a a focus and then you're like and the romance is there too like it's nice <laughs> but yeah that's just me and then I love the acting aspects of it because I just relate to them a lot and then Ozzy with his whole I don't know he's a very relatable character with his anxiety and stuff and like being that sort of like awkward person even though he's really good I like talking to people interestingly but it's just funny so like you wouldn't know because he's so good at hiding it but he's just stressed out all the time and I think a lot of people feel that way so I think it's a really good story for you know all sorts of people like you don't have to love acting to love this story and I'm so excited to see where it goes like seven and a half chapters is not enough at all so I'm so excited for more and if you want I can do an update video after there's like many more chapters and we'll see where it goes by then and oh I'm just so excited to read it and I couldn't wait to share it with you and yeah so like this video please if you liked it I hope you did and subscribe it helps me a lot and let me know what you thought of Butai ni Sake. Did you love it? Have you done theater? Do you relate to these his anxiety moments of, oh no, I'm, I can't go there. Oh no, I guess I'll get off this train. Or is it just me? <laughs> All right. I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.